Hi everyone, I'm Nick Olivo, and today we're looking at 5 must-have mods for your D&D 5th Edition games in Roll20. Now these mods will not only help you with combat, but can also help automate some of your setup and prep as well. And it's important to remember that in order to use mods, you do need to have a pro account in order to do what I'm about to show you. Before we dive in, I'd just like to thank Roll20 for sponsoring this video. So if you've been following my channel for any length of time, you know I do a lot with mods and macros. And I had someone ask me recently, well, out of all these, which ones do you find yourself using the most? So in this video, I'm going to show you the five that I put into pretty much every game that I run, and I'll give some examples of the macros that I use when working with these mods. Alright, so what I'm going to do here is just load those top five into my game one at a time. We'll talk about each one as we go. And the first one that we're going to load in is the ultimate Swiss army knife of mods, and that is called Token Mod. Token Mod was written by the arcane scriptomancer himself, the Aaron. Aaron, as always, thank you for everything you do for the community. And this mod allows you to do things like move tokens between layers. It allows you to set the properties of a particular token. It allows you to make it bigger, smaller, change the vision settings. All these manner of cool things can be done with Token Mod. So I'm just going to go ahead and add that right into my game. Okay, we see that our sandbox has restarted. Let's jump back into my game here. And to start out with, I've got a brand new token I've put on the board here. And if I open this up, I can see that I've connected it to my character sheet for Astora, but none of my bars have been wired up. There's no vision settings put in here. I want to do that, but I don't want to go through and click on every single one of these. Well, I can use token mod to automatically set up those linkages, create the vision settings, and automatically update Astora's default token so that those settings will persist every time I drag her onto a new map. And I've just popped up my trusty notepad window here to show you what that command would look like. Basically we're saying token mod, set, and we're setting bright vision, that's going to be her regular vision. She's got night vision out to 30 feet, so in D&D terms this is your dark vision. And then we're linking bar 1 to her HP, bar 2 to her AC, and I like to have bar 3 connected to the passive wisdom of each of my characters. That way I can just kind of click on their token to know what their passive score is. And then this default token command is going to update her default token so that these settings will persist every time we drag her out onto a new map. So I'm just going to cancel out of this for a second. Let's copy this command, run it. And now you see the bars just popped up with the appropriate values. And if I double click on the token, there they are. Bar one is HP, bar two is AC, passive wisdom. There we go. And all of her vision settings have been enabled properly. And that's great. And now if I go ahead and let's, let's just delete her right off the board here. And let's go over to our journal tab. We'll drag Astora on again. And we can see that all of those settings persisted because we used that update default token command. Let's do another quick example of token mod. This is a map from the Scarlet Citadel campaign I'm currently running. And the map of this town does not include all of these labels by default, but I wanted to add labels to the map so that my players would easily know where every establishment in the town was. And incidentally, these town and city labels are available in the Roll20 Marketplace. They're developed by an amazing individual named Keith Curtis, who I'm going to talk more about later. I'll put a link to that down in the video description. But let's say I want to add another one of these labels into my game. Well, I'm going to come down here, I'm going to grab this apothecary label, and let's say I'm going to want to put the apothecary over here and have this be the apothecary's house. Well, the apothecary label is much bigger than the rest of them, right? Because this is the default size. I want to scale this down so that it matches the other ones. So what I did was I just come here, I go advanced, set dimensions, and I figure out how big this size that I like is, 118 by 39. And then I put that into a token mod command. And that means that I can just copy this, select the item I care about, paste in that command, and now boom, token mod has resized it. So I used this command over and over and over again as I was building this map out, and it made it much faster and easier for me to get the map prepped because now all I need to do is drag out a new label. Like let's just use alter here. I'll just throw it right here on the map. Sure, that sounds good. And then click back in chat. Press up on the keyboard, the command is right there, make sure you got it selected, 
and boom, it's resized. It really makes it much faster to set things up like this using token mod. Now, our next mod is called Chat Set Atra. And Chat Set Atra is another one of these Swiss Army type scripts. It was written by a user named Jacob. Jacob, thank you very much. This is an awesome, awesome mod. And where token mod goes and modifies tokens, Chat Set Atra modifies elements on your character sheets. So once you've got the script added, just scroll on down here and click Add Script. Again, the API sandbox will restart and then we're ready to use it. Now, I recently did a video on Chat Set Atra where I showed how it could add things like feats and class features into your character sheet, but I didn't talk about adding magical items, and I think that's another scenario where this mod really shines. So, what I usually do when I prep my games is I roll up all of the treasure that my party is going to find, and I always try to include a couple of little magic items if I can within that. And so one of the things that I rolled was a hat of disguise. Now, if I just take my character sheet here and I drag and drop a hat of disguise on, it goes and it puts that hat of disguise into my character's inventory and that's great, but it doesn't provide any information about the item itself. So what I've done is created this chat set Atra command which puts information about that item onto my player's character sheet. So this is my hat of disguise. It is an item. I'm saying it's a wondrous item, uncommon, which requires attunement, and then the description of the item itself. So now my party has found the treasure chest. They've found the hat of disguise, and it's a matter of, okay, who wants it? And let's say that my bard decides that he wants it. So we say, sure, we select his token, we copy this command, and then we paste it into chat, we get this command saying that we've set attributes, and if we open up his character sheet now, let's scoot this out of the way, go over to the core tab, and we see now that a hat of disguise has been added to his list of features and traits. And so now all the information about the item is right here. And if I want to, just like with any other item in here, I can send it to chat by clicking this bubble and I can collapse its description just by clicking on its name. So that's just another great way you can automate something for your prep process that can really speed things along during gameplay. Okay, our next mod is called Group Initiative. This one also comes to us from the Arcane Scriptomancer, the Aaron, and what this one allows you to do is roll initiative for multiple creatures at the same time during combat. Now, when you add this to your game, you may get a prompt like this. We're just going to say OK to that, and with that done, we can jump back into our game, and when we do, we get this prompt from Group Initiative saying that we don't have anything configured right yet. Now, Group Initiative supports multiple different character sheets within Roll20, so what you want to do is choose which of the character sheets you're using. In my case, I'm using the D&D 5e by Roll20. So I'm going to say apply config, and then that sets a whole bunch of default values automatically for group initiative, specifically which attributes are going to be used when calculating the initiative for a given creature. But the great thing about this now is we can highlight a group of tokens like these skeletons here. And now what we can do is run this command group init, and that will roll initiative for each of these selected skeletons. Now let's go ahead, let's open up that turn tracker window so you can see this. And there we go, we've had the command roll initiative for all three of my skeletons all at once. Now there are some other commands that group init can do that are really helpful. For example, group init can toggle the turn order window open or closed. So if I run this command right here, you see it closes it. If I run it again, you see it opens it back up. And it can also sort your creatures as well. So these just happen to come in in sort order, but let's change this guy here. Okay, so if I use the command group init dash dash sort, let's run that. You can see it reorders the elements within the turn order window. So what this means you can do is actually chain these commands together into a macro so that you open the turn order window, roll initiative, and then sort them. So let's see that. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to clear out everything in here. Let's remove all turns. We're going to close the turn order window, and we'll just run all three of these in sequence. And there we go. We've got our skeletons with their initiative all sorted, and the turn order window opened automatically. And if you'd like to learn more about what Group Initiative can do, I'll put a link to this wiki page down in the video description below, which outlines a bunch of other scenarios that you can use it for. Now, continuing the theme of working with tokens in groups, the next mod we're going to look at is called Group Check. 
Group check allows you to make saving throws for groups of creatures simultaneously. This one also comes to us from Jacob. Jacob, thank you again. I'm just going to go ahead and add this into my game. Again, we're going to click OK to the prompt that we get, and we'll wait for the sandbox to restart. OK, sandbox has restarted. Let's go ahead, let's jump back into our game. Before we can use group check, we do need to configure it. And that can be done with a command like this, group check config dash dash import 5e OGL. That means I'm working with the fifth edition character sheet by roll 20. The documentation page for group check actually lists out a bunch of other character sheets that are supported. I'll drop a link to this down in the video description as well so you can refer back to it. But what I'm gonna do is just run this command right now. We see that dataset 5e OGL has been imported. That means that we are now ready to start using this script in our game. So. Let's say that we are in combat with these skeletons and one of my characters casts Burning Hands and all three of these skeletons need to make a dexterity save. Well, we can do that with a command like this, group check dash dash dexterity save. So let's go ahead, let's run that. And you can see that we've rolled saving throws for all three of the selected tokens. Now, something that makes this script even more useful is that it has a helper script that can actually apply damage to all of these tokens as well. So if each of these skeletons takes, say, six points of fire damage from that burning hand spell, we can apply that damage to all the tokens automatically, and that way we don't have to worry about deducting HP from each individual token. Now, in order to do this, there is a separate helper script you have to install. That's linked here on the group check documentation page, but it's this apply damage source code. And I can't stress this enough, folks. Apply damage is separate from group check. Just installing group check will not get you apply damage. This is probably one of the biggest points of confusion that I've seen when folks use group check and apply damage. They think that group check just automatically has apply damage included in it. It does not. I'm sorry if I'm like harping on that, but I just want to make sure everybody's 100% clear on this. So to get apply damage, just go ahead and click on this link and then say raw. We'll control A and control C to copy all of it. Go back to our game and then we're just going to say new script and we'll call that apply damage. Paste in that code we just copied and save the script. And again, once the sandbox restarts, we'll be able to use apply damage in our game. All right, so sandbox has restarted. Let's jump back into our game. And this time around, we're gonna use a more elaborate command here. This group check macro that you're looking at right now will prompt the user what kind of a save they're trying to make, whether it's dex, con, or wisdom. And then we're going to input our DC that we're trying to save against. And then we can also input the damage that we are going to deal out to our creatures. So let's go ahead, let's just run this and you'll see it in action. So I'm just gonna paste this in. There we go, and let's move the notepad window. All right, so we see that, what kind of save are we doing? All right, we're gonna do a dex save. And then what's the spell DC we're saving against? Let's say it's a 14, submit that. And then how much damage did our burning hand spell do? Let's say it was eight points of fire damage. And what happens with that damage if we save? Do we deal half damage or do we take no damage? We're gonna say half damage for burning hands. We'll submit that. All right, and now you see again, we've got our saving throws. We're trying to make the save versus DC 14. One of my skeletons failed, the other two passed. So that means these two will take half damage. The first one will take full damage. We'll go ahead, we'll say apply damage. And there we go. We see that two of our skeletons have had four points of damage applied to them and the other one has had eight points of damage applied to them. And this really speeds up combat because now you don't need to worry about going into every individual token and modifying them one at a time. But again, apply damage is separate from group check. Make sure that you've installed that before you try to use this macro, which I will put down in the video description. The final mod that we're going to look at today is called Token Action Maker. And Token Action Maker comes to us from Keith Curtis, Kevin, and Brett. Thank you very much, folks. This script is incredibly helpful and really speeds things along. Let's go ahead. Let's get this added in. What this is going to allow you to do is generate token actions for a particular creature. And if you're not familiar with what token actions are, let me show you. If we go ahead and open up our skeleton's character sheet right here, here are all of its actions. It's got a short bow, it's got a short sword. Okay, 
cool. In order for me to make an attack with my skeleton, I need to open its character sheet and then click on short sword or short bow. Token action is going to turn those actions into buttons that I can just click on when I have a token highlighted. The command for this is very simple. It is exclamation point TA. So let's go ahead, let's copy that, highlight our skeleton's token, enter it in, Okay, we've created 5e token actions for skeleton, and now when I click on my skeleton's token, you can see we've got these buttons at the top for the short bow and the short sword, but then there's also a button for initiative, a button to make skill checks, and a button to make saving throws. And this is awesome now because if I want my skeleton to make an attack with its short bow, I just click on it, and then short bow. And there we go, my attack is right there. I didn't need to open its character sheet in order to do that. But where this gets even better is we created the token actions for this skeleton, but if I click on this skeleton, you can see that it has the same button bar. So does this one. So when Token Action Maker runs, it's adding all of those commands to the skeleton's character sheet, which means that every skeleton in your game now has that button bar created for it. And even if I go ahead and drag out a brand new skeleton from the compendium and drop it onto the board, it has those buttons as well. And that'll persist across maps. If you've got another page that has skeletons on it, then those skeletons are gonna have the token action buttons too. So every skeleton in this game is going to have those token actions created for it. Now, if you create a new game, then you'll have to run token action again. But all of the skeletons in this game will have those token actions created and that'll speed up gameplay. So there you have it, folks. Five must-have mods for your D&D 5th Edition games in Roll20. Just want to give another quick shout out of thanks to the Aaron, Jacob, Keith Curtis, Kevin, and Brett for writing these amazing mods and doing everything that they do for the community. So, I hope you all found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing. Until next time, folks, have a great day.